Do you know when the last time a sitting House Majority Leader lost a primary was? Correct answer, never. There's been a House Majority Leader since 1899, uh, that's when they began that, and they've never lost a primary until yesterday. Down goes Cantor, down goes Cantor. So now everybody's wondering what in the world happened there. According to some internal polling, <laughs> And that pollster is so fired. <laughs> Cantor had over a 30 point lead, but apparently that was not the case. Instead, he lost. And it was 56 to 44. It wasn't even that close. He lost by 12 points, the sitting House Majority Leader, in a primary to a guy no one knew that spent just a little over $100,000 on the race. Eric Cantor spent over $5 million in the race and he lost anyway. Okay, so why? Why did he lose? And now there's all these crazy theories, some justified theories, but I'm gonna break down exactly why it happened for you right here. So first of all, the crazy theories. Uh, Eric Cantor is Jewish, that's why he lost. Now he is the only Jewish Republican congressman, uh, and you know, the people are talking about, oh, it's a rural district, well, that's like a wink wink, right? Uh, no, there's no talk of him being Jewish one way or another. Uh, if that was a factor, it was a tiny, tiny, tiny factor, not what switched uh, this seat in a dramatic way. And then there was talk about how, oh my God, Congressman Ben Jones from Georgia uh, did a counter campaign to get Democrats to vote in the open primary, and now all the losers in Eric Cantor's campaign are saying, oh yeah, that was it, that was it, it wasn't us. It wasn't that our polling was off. It wasn't that we ran the wrong campaign. It isn't that we threw $5 million in the toilet. It's, uh, oh, the Democrats came in and dirty, did dirty tricks in the open primary. There's no evidence to back that up either. There's no uh, evidence that there's overwhelming Democratic votes uh, in this primary. Okay, now, the biggest uh, point that people are making is that, no, 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 it was because um, Dave uh, Bratt, who won this race, was very much against immigration. He said that Eric Cantor was the leader in amnesty. And so, look, it's very important right after a race to establish what happened with your talking points. That's what politicians do. So the conservatives rushed out there and said, it was oh, immigration. Anybody who wants to do immigration, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. It's immigration. Oh, and a lot of the mainstream media went hook, line, and Singapore. Now, the, did Dave Bratt talk about immigration? Absolutely. Now, he also said this about immigration. Eric Cantor doesn't represent you. He represents large corporations seeking a never-ending supply of cheap foreign labor. Now, yes, that's about immigration, but if you notice, wow, that's interesting. Now, you don't often see Republicans speaking against large corporations. So, was it that or was it the immigration issue? Well, let's dive a little bit more into the numbers, because Facts are what's important here, not talking points. So when you look at Cantor's district, now Brad's district, if he wins against the Democrat, uh, it turns out immigration reform that the conservatives are so against, 72% of his district supports it, only 23% oppose it. Well, you say, okay, look, that's not primary Republican voters, that's the whole district. That's right, that's fair. So let's go to Republicans in Cantor's district. 70% support immigration reform, only 27% oppose it. Now, yes, in a primary, even more conservative voters will come out, so maybe that number is a little off. But 70 to 20, going in the opposite direction, saying, yes, we, we don't mind if undocumented immigrants go towards citizenship, is not why you win an election if you're on the side of the 27%. So that makes no sense whatsoever. So then let's look a little further into that anti-corporate talk and see if we can find an answer here. Now, did he have a lot? I mean, was, was that a big part of his platform? That's what I wanted to know. So I read a lot into it. Wait till you get a load of these quotes. Here's some of the things that Dave Brad said on the stump. It's time we elect a conservative, not just a Republican, to represent us. Okay, good. Now, look, that could mean anything, right? Again, open to interpretation. So let's go to what he meant by that. So he also says in those same speeches, I will fight to end crony capitalist programs that benefit the rich and powerful. Okay, now look, well, now we're beginning to love this language. Okay, now crony capitalism is exactly what Eric Cantor does. He protects the banks in ways that Dave Brad's going to explain in a second, and he's absolutely right about. Now, when you run against crony capitalism, that's going to work. 
because nobody likes crony capitalism. Republicans don't like it, Democrats don't like it, nobody likes it. And that's exactly what the Republican establishment is, that's exactly what Eric Cantor was. And here he is running against the rich and the powerful, you don't often see that from a Republican. You want more specific, right? Let's give you more specific. He said, I am running against Cantor because he does not represent the citizens of the 7th district, but rather large corporations seeking insider deals, crony bailouts, and a constant supply of low-wage workers. Okay, now, I was told that if Republicans spoke out against large corporations and bailouts that they got, that they wouldn't win. How weird how it turns out, in the words of Dave Brandt, this was a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle what happens if you actually appeal to voters and not corporations. <laughs> it's not a miracle, man. The word populist means popular, go, appealing to the people. <laughs> of course, if you appeal to the people, you're more likely to get their votes. The central theme of Brad's campaign is that Cantor is beholden to business, specifically the US Chamber of Commerce and the Business Roundtable. He ran against the Chamber of Commerce. Why did this Republican win in a stunning upset? Because he ran against the Chamber of Commerce. That's what I've been telling Democrats to do. You know why? That's incredibly popular. You see, normal voters are not corporate robots. Donors are corporate robots. And all these guys, once they get into power, and it might happen to Dave Brad just as easily as it has happened to all of those grassroots Tea Party Republicans that went in, and a lot of the Democrats that went in pretending to be populist. Or maybe in the beginning they were actually were, until they got corrupted. What winds up happening is they start taking some of that money and they get addicted to it. But in the beginning, he didn't have any corporate money. In fact, corporate money was spent against Dave Brad. So he doesn't like that. He, he, the National Rifle Association went in there, the realtors went in there, a chemical lobbyists, chemical company lobbyists went in and supported Cantor and spent money against Brat. So he's like, look at this, crony capitalists. Eric Cantor does them favors and then they, they give him $5 million to run against me. You're right about that. And the voters in your very conservative primary also agree with you. You run against the establishment, you run against Wall Street, you run against crony capitalism. Of course, of course you do. Now he got really specific. He talked about the Stock Act. Now this is smart, because this is absolutely true. Listen to what he said here, it's a long quote. He said, in my view, the greatest moral failure, which, is, which disqualifies Cantor for high public office, was his abuse of the public trust concerning the Stock Act, a bipartisan bill that was going through after the financial crisis. The Stock Act was intended to ban insider trading on congressional knowledge for congressmen and their families. That's exactly what it was for. So then he goes on to explain, CNN discovered that Cantor altered the language of the House version in order to allow family members and spouses to continue insider trading on congressional knowledge. In my view, this action was beneath the dignity of the office. Virginians deserve better, and I pledge to treat everyone equal under the law. Not only is that completely accurate, not only did we do a video explaining how Eric Cantor did the bidding of Wall Street there and the insiders, but actually, Dave Ratt is underestimating it. He, Eric Cantor weakened that bill in three different ways to allow Wall Street lobbyists to get even bigger advantages. Now, why would any voter, Republican or Democrat, want Wall Street lobbyists to have an advantage over them? And if you run on that platform, of course they're going to be on your side if you think it's still not clear enough. The issues the Republican Party has been paying way too much attention to Wall Street and not enough to Main Street. He, and he spoke of a fissure between Main Street and Wall Street. By the way, when did he do that? In case you were unclear about this, he did it after the election. He went on Fox News Channel and said, they're paying too much attention to Wall Street. He ran against Wall Street as a Republican. And he went on Fox News and said it. That's why he won. Look, you can love Wall Street, you can hate Wall Street. I don't care about your per per personal or political opinion on it, and it's not my, about my personal or political opinion about it. It's about what works with the voters, whether they're Democrat or Republican voters. If you run against Wall Street, it's enormously popular. Who in the 7th District of Virginia is like, yay, Wall Street, let's give them another bailout, let's give them another loophole, let's deregulate them more so they can take more risks with our money. Nobody thinks that. Only the incredibly corrupt, the donors, the lobbyists, the politicians, the campaign consultants in Washington think that. They're the only ones. <laughs> Finally, I love this quote. Dave Bratt's campaign slogan. All of the investment banks up in New York and DC 
they should have gone to jail. That's not Elizabeth Warren. That's not a liberal firebrand. That's not a Democrat. That's a Republican firebrand, a conservative, an actual conservative, saying, man, they cheated you. And he's right. They committed fraud. And he's right. They should have gone to jail. Eric Cantor and the Republican leadership do not know what a free market is at all. And the clearest evidence of that is the financial crisis. When I say free markets, I mean no favoritism to K Street lobbyists. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why he won. He was screaming it from the rooftops. This is why he won. By the way, if you think it's immigration, Lindsey Graham had not only similar problems as Eric Cantor, he actually voted in favor of immigration reform that conservatives hated. Same exact night in South Carolina, and he crushed his primary opponent. It's not immigration. It's this populist track. All right, final one, because this one, in my opinion, is exactly right. I'm not against business, he said. I'm against big business in bed with big government. Bingo! Look, if you're an actual conservative, you're an actual libertarian, that should be your mantra. Look, look, I'm a progressive. I'm not against business. We run a small business here. Who the hell? Of course, we need jobs. We need business, obviously, obviously. But why do we want big business crushing small business? Why do we want big business to be able to buy our politicians, to buy our government? If you hate big government and you think they're corrupt, who do you think corrupted them? <laughs> it's big business. And when Dave Bratt said that, all of a sudden, Republicans all across his district were like, Wait a minute, how come nobody said that before? Hell yes, he's right. And they voted for him. And one thing that might have also hurt Eric Cantor, people who think that uh, Congress is doing a good job right now is at a historic low. What's the historic low? Is it like in the 30s, is it in the 20s? People who think Congress is doing a good job right now stands at 5%. 5%. Gee, I wonder why Eric Cantor lost. Eric Cantor is the face of crony capitalism. He is the establishment, and people don't like that, including Republican primary voters. So there's a lot that I disagree with Dave Brad on. I mean, you get into his record, and you will see that he is totally conservative. And boy, I have 100 positions I massively disagree with him on. Having said that, I'm thrilled that he beat an establishment Republican like Eric Cantor. Eric Cantor is never going to change the system. Whereas a guy like Brad, we might disagree with on all the policy issues, but on the, on the core issue, the most important issue of corruption in Washington, actually real voters across all political spectrums totally agree. His win is almost the perfect test case for why we say conservatives are actually on our side when it comes to getting money out of politics, when it comes to Wolfpack. This is why we see conservative politicians at the state level supporting us in state after state after state. Because when you get lower, the closer you get to the people and not to Washington, D.C., the more they go, yeah, well, of course I don't want the lobbyists to rip me off. Amazing. So it's not just that I'm happy Eric Cantor lost. Look, man, he gets replaced by another corporate robot. What difference does it make, right? I'm happy why he lost and how Dave Bratt won.